I V M. Hi, I'm Utsav, a behavior researcher by training and a slow traveler by passion. Postcards from Nowhere is a travel podcast where I condense a decade of travel experiences and explore not just the where but also the why and how to travel. My stories emerge from slow traveling the less explored parts of the world: Bosnia and Herzegovina, Armenia, Uzbekistan, and even China. At the end of each story, I give practical tips and new ideas about how to travel better. This week, we discover the neuroscience that connects Indian classical music and why we as Indians love eating with our hands. I am sure you recognize the first set of sounds. The classic tennis player grunts during a rally. You may not have recognized the second one. It's actually of a karateka delivering punches and kicks. The obvious similarity between the two sports is the grunting sounds at the point of maximum effort. The strenuous forehand return to a tennis ball traveling at 140 km an hour and the ki hak of taekwondo delivering a debilitating kick to your opponent. Now there is good reason for doing this. Grunting is a great way to very quickly exhale, expelling all the CO2 from your lungs quickly, while also reminding you to engage the muscles of your core to help generate power. The excess power generated is then channeled into the shot or the kick, and that's the physical mechanics of the sport. But what if there is more to it? And why am I talking about grunting in tennis and taekwondo? in an episode that talks about the neuroscience of indian classical music and eating with our hands let's consider two key aspects of grunting the use of hands to deliver power and the mouth or tongue to deliver the sound the tongue is controlled by the 12th cranial nerve or basically a nerve that penetrates the skull and goes into the brain the hands are controlled by spinal nerves which are quite unlike cranial nerves they receive instructions from nerves that reach out from our spinal cord threading their way between our vertebrae in addition to that the areas of the brain that control the tongue and the hands are not adjacent to each other this means that if these two are to occur together consistently there must be another region of the brain where they are linked hand movements come in two general forms the first is a power grip movement which involves opening and closing a fist just like a player would tightly hold a tennis racket or a taekwondo in would tightly clench a fist Research shows that coupling hand movements with specific mouth movements often with vocalization shortens the reaction time needed to do both and we all know that at the highest level of sport a gain of even a few milliseconds can have disproportionate returns the second movement is a precision hand movement which involves delicate pinching between the thumb and the index finger according to neuroscientists These two types of hand movements are often accompanied by different tongue and mouth movements. This coordination between hands, tongue and mouth is seen at its pinnacle in Indian classical music. In season 9 of Cook Studio Pakistan, the Pakistani artist Strings and Noori teamed up with Shilpa Rao from India to give us a soulful track, Par Channa De. It also included Noor Zehra, who remains the only performer of the Sagar Veena. since its creation in 1971 at around minute 516 shilpa rao breaks into a solo and you will see her pinching her thumb and index finger the same can be observed almost throughout in the singing of piyush mishra in his coke studio mtv appearances in both his songs husna and ghar or in the song choudhary by mame khan in season 2 of the show in fact if you look at almost any classical singer either from the hindustani or the carnatic tradition you will constantly see the pinching of the thumb and the index finger researchers have shown in the past decade that tactile sensations from our sensitive fingertips and tongue are often coupled together in our brain in ways that affect performance each time a singer goes deep into a note or increases their pitch their tongues move forward and their fingers pinch in contrast look at the peerless abida parveen in tu jhoom from season 14 of coke studio pakistan In the entire song she rarely pinches her fingers rather singing with an open-handed stance 
She sings open mouthed, brings all the power from her diaphragm and legs, and dominates as a powerful singer. In contrast, Nasibo Lal throughout the same song has her fingers pinched as she goes deeper into each note while she sings. The open hand stance or powerful singing can be seen in the song Rang from season 9 of Coke Studio Pakistan, where Rahat Fateh Ali Khan and the late Amjad Sabri demonstrate this. In fact, pick up any performance where you can see the vocalist on screen. You will see the finger pinching and the power grip or open hand movements depending on what the vocalist is trying to achieve. So, allow me a rather cruel thought experiment. What if I tied the hands of these singers and then asked them to render the same compositions they are so well known for? Their deep wiring between the hand and the tongue would get disturbed and they would likely mess up their performance because their reaction times would be noticeably slower, making them go off key. Where is this coordination coming from? According to neuroscientist R. Douglas Fields from the University of Maryland, it likely originated in our ancient ancestors' hand to mouth feeding movements. The development of language links to this because spoken language is typically accompanied by automatic hand movements. Presumably, hand gestures were the first type of communication to evolve, and they gradually blended with appropriate mouth sounds that allowed for language. Functional brain imaging studies show that specific tongue and hand movements activate the same region of the brain in the premotor cortex. Furthermore, the same neurons in the premotor area fire when a monkey grasps an object with its mouth or its hand. Electrical simulation of the same area triggers a monkey's hand to make a grip motion while its mouth opens and its hand moves to its mouth. So is it any surprise that eating with our hands provides us with a different kind of pleasure? Whether your primary cereal is rice or wheat, each of us performs a similar pinching of fingers to pick up veggies with a piece of chapati or combine multiple elements in a South Indian meal in a single pinch to enjoy it with rice. The use of cutlery would divide us of this pinching of fingers, which draws out our tongue forward, allowing us to relish our food. And if you're anyone like me, the best way any Indian food is enjoyed is with our own hands. No amount of cutlery is going to convince me that rajma chawal, sambar rice, or even a paratha or a dosa is going to taste better with a fork and a spoon. But this fascinating connection should come with a warning. Just because our indigenous practices are dear to us and we discover scientific reasons behind them does not make all of our practices sensible. We must avoid finding ways to justify our preferences and accept that some of our most beloved practices are just personal choices. And that's perfectly okay. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IBM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am Utsav Memory on Twitter and YB Travel 42 on Instagram.